Well, how do that, chums? Today, captain of the steves, and today, chums, I've got a cup of tea. Look at that, the coaster seems to be stuck to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, people, I'm going to be having a little sip of this, and then we're going to be getting into some more on this emoji, the snowflake emoji that Sean Murray has tweeted out over on the Twitterverse. One second, though, peeps. Let's have a sip. Glad I took just a sip. That's red freaking hot. Okay, people, right. So let's jump on in over onto the actual tinter webs, and I'll show you what I've got over there, people. Right, so I put out a quick poll, because now there's quite a lot of speculation videos out there inside of the viewerverse, done by many of the content creators that we all know and love. So many speculation videos are out now for No Man's Sky. Some didn't even cross my mind, and not in my last poll. What do you feel is most likely? If I miss one add it to the comments. Now I put a little thing at the front here just as an indicator of what that sort of update would be. That's not really the update name. But we've got Fractal, Realm of Glass, or Extra Variation to Proc Gen, which is kind of my own one there. And that could be why there's a little bit of leaning bias since um, people have seen my video down here called Fractal. But then there's Unique Player, Ship, Multi-Tool, and Customizations. So well, like a snowflake is unique and individual, maybe this update is going to be focusing on on the individual to make them more unique. I didn't really cotton on to that connection, but Jason Plays has done a fantastic video on that, and he's actually convinced me that it quite well could be that. So yeah, 25% of hit on up that. Would be awesome to have more control over your multi-tools. I'd love to make my own sort of experimental multi-tool with some crystalline bits on it and alieny bits. That'd be freaking excellent. Or to even customize ships. Now I did a video on ship customization some time ago. That was one of the videos that Jason and retweeted and um, put it out there and the view of us and gave me a shout out for which was fantastic but yes my ship customization video i'll put a link in the top right hand corner be sure to go check that one out because yes if you are worried about ship customization maybe destroying ship hunting i've done a video that kind of sort of marries up and comes to some sort of compromise and also brings in more playability around ship hunting so yeah give it a watch anyway the next one is hoff frost world overhaul and and dynamic weather. Okay, so yes, now that could quite easily be on the cards. I mean, the uh, frost crystal planets are the ones that I probably enjoy the least out of all the planetary biomes. Those and perhaps the exotic alien worlds. But yes, engine, massive engine overhaul, AI late lighting and performance. So yes, there's two people that have put videos out on this one. There's Elite Gamers, there's also Beeblebum, and uh, got, he mentions Golden Gek inside of his as well, so I may as well mention all three. But yes, it says an engine out there made by UBI soft now that engine is called snowdrop now the snowdrop engine has got elements of AI in there for better parving for NPCs and things it's got massive overhauls for water effects uh, lighting effects clouding all sorts of stuff that make the environments more believable and immersive so they're wondering whether it might be a hint that no man's sky or hello games I should say are going to be tweaking their own engine to bring in elements like that of Snowdrop, not that they are going to be using the Snowdrop engine, which is how you could have interpreted maybe Elite Games Gamers video. Originally, I did that, but yes, he's put out another video now to say no, that's not what I meant. So go watch that and hit that one up. Okay, so Cold is Universe Death and full on reset and overhaul. So this is something that I meant. I saw um, Professor Cynical hit on first, but not only that, Kanaju has done a really good video on what he feels that the actual snowflake could mean. And uh, yeah, he mentions the universe death in there. In fact, Kanaju's video pretty much mentions all of these, and then he goes to town with other things as well. I really enjoyed Kanaju's video, so well done there, Kanaju. Yeah, some great speculation bouncing around inside of the verse. Now, I didn't really mention anybody around the Frost World overhaul dynamic weather sort of thing. However, on my previous poll, that one was freaking top of the blinking charts, mate. So yeah, the, well, when you combine the two together, the 15 and the 32%, so to see it sort of bottom out on this one is a little odd. But that could be because there's not many 
seeing people banging that drum. I believe LG or um, um, Legacy Zero has hit that one up and said, yes, it could be an overhaul to the Frost World. So Legacy Zero has also done an awesome video. It's great to see all these videos bouncing about. I love seeing other content creators' ideas when it comes to this sort of stuff because we're all wired differently and we've all got our own take on stuff. There is other, other speculation videos out there. So yeah, go hit them up, give them a watch because it's, it's, it's all part and part fun of the actual journey that is no man's sky anyway you can probably see that i've got a lot of tabs to get through up here so let's go through them so i'm going to focus firstly on the fractal and the realm of glass and um, extra variation to proc gen and uh, I move on to that a little i think i've said quite a lot on the others but i'm just going to hit on up my own favorite one at the moment so here we go so the sentinel update um, brought us in new sentinel types. This one is called the Summoner Sentinel. And you can see there, it brings in some extra sentinels. Now, as they beam in, right at the very end, you see a little flash, and there's like the little triangles that pop out, and then there's some sparks that come off. But not only that, when they call in shields, you see this animation where there's these glitch lines that shoot across, and then there's like little triangles that appear before the shield appears. Now, there are some still screenshots a little bit further up, there we go. Look, you can see all the little triangles appearing there. Now, there is a jetpack trail that's called the Reality Glitch, Glitch Trail that does the exact same special effect when you're jetpacking around. It's my favourite one. I use it all the time. Reality Glitch Trail. Let me just read this out to you. The jetpack exhaust is fitted with a high-concentrated pugnium dispenser. Pugnium is what you get when you destroy sentinels. When the jets are activated, the resulting react react carves miniature distortions in a reality and creates an interesting visual effect. <laughs> sure does. But yeah, the fact that it carves miniature distortions in reality is like having a Hadron Collider strapped to your back. Freaking crazy stuff. But yeah, little mini distortions in reality is kind of interesting. Now, when you go over to the boundary failures, if you don't know what a boundary failure is, the boundary failure is one of these things. Now you find them on abandoned systems more so than any, and also on the sort of um, exotic sort of biome type wells. You know the ones with the trophies on? The ones that I mentioned earlier that I'm not overly keen on? I mean, they're great the first couple of times you come across them, but they've only got one fauna on there and it's really strange normally. And you can pick up trophies on there for your bases and stuff. And you would find these on there. And they're usually in abandoned systems on abandoned planets. So it's, it's kind of an interesting one, but they haven't really got no uh, rhyme more reason apart from to drop law but when you read into the law when you get to um, 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 number 12 which is death it starts talking about um, failures in reality so here we go analysis it arrived in the night beneath the stars it seems certain now that the subroutine has just judged my prevalent presence anomalous and threat stable stability of reality but then it goes on to um, talk about the world of glass yes it's correct but i will survive i know now that i saw the secret a place beneath reality a place i should not have seen i saw a world of glass Pretty darn freaking interesting stuff. So I'm wondering whether these boundary failures might fire up and actually cause a reality glitch. Maybe that same sort of animation with all the triangles and the lines and stuff like that. I mean, they look quite computerized and reality sort of glitching anyway, don't they? they they've got a certain ambience about these reality sort of, well, the, the boundary failures. And I'm wondering whether that's a boundary failure between realities and it's going to open up and it's big enough to fly your ship through it. You can fly a freaking ship through it. Even the big freaking, the biggest of the explorer ships, you can fly through it. So I'm wondering whether we get out of our ship, fire it up, get back in our ship and fly our ship through the dang thing. that will be pretty awesome. And maybe once you enter into this glitched reality, maybe you only get a set period of time there, like 16 minutes or something, can play into the old 16, 16, 16 and you take out a load of sentinels in there and things like that and maybe get some other sentinelized modules and upgrades and things for you maybe sort of an end game type thing something to loot for and quest for and maybe there might be sentinel bosses or something in there i think that'd be pretty darn freaking epic if they introduced the realm of glass in that way and it'd be nice if the worlds that we are 
we come into i mean you're going from an exotic planet that's all glitched out anyway it makes sense then once you go through the failed boundary that was on the other side maybe it could be fractally generated so it's a proper alien world a world that you can't really build on you're there for 16 minutes anyway and you're there to loot stuff almost like a raid system and we're raiding the realm of glass to get stuff from it to try and help our own iteration or our own universe somehow we'll get on to that in a bit anyway Another way that we could access the realm of glass is maybe through the station override. Because at the moment, when you put in a station override, it just says counterfeit, and then it says glass, 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 glass. So what happens when it does work? Maybe it will take that whole reality that you're sitting in and take you into a separate reality, into the realm of glass, and that whole station just teleports you into another realm. So when you exit the station, it's still the same planet names and the placeholders, but when you fly down to those planets again it's maybe fractally generated and the reason i keep saying fractally generated is because we've just got given a snowflake emoji and they are fractals so it all plays into each other i kind of think the snowflake for that reason could be that it's either going to be better proc gen around fractal generation and maybe add in extra algorithms but i think it's more likely to be the realm of glass okay the next way you could probably get in there is by the singularity engine <laughs> So the Singularity Engine was introduced in one of the latest expeditions. Yes, the Endurance update and the, uh, I think it was the Leviathan sort of um, oh, uh, expedition. But you got given a Singularity Engine which opens up a black hole that lets you warp in between systems. I kind of think, if anything, this might be entry point into the void rather into the realm of glass because there's no real references to the realm of glass linked to the Singularity Engine that I can think of inside of the lore. So this one I think is probably to get us into the void. And you're probably thinking, are they two separate places? We'll get to that in a moment, people. Heck yes, we will. So yeah, I've been talking to um, Chat GPT, and that's right at the end here, Glass versus the Void. We'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, the old Myth Beacon is another thing that separated realities. It managed to bring in the Normandy from a separate reality during an expedition. I think it was the... Oh, I can't remember which one it blinking was now. It doesn't actually say on the... Beachhead! That's the one! Beachhead! Yeah, so that actually brought in the Normandy. Again, it sort of separated realities. And the funny thing here, it mentions the boundary failure as well, with the echoes beneath the systems and things like that. So it does play into my other theories. So maybe we might... I mean, at the moment, you can buy a Myth Beacon inside of the Quicksilver store. Serves no rhyme or reason. However, it could be maybe Nada gives you one daily, but if you want to do it more than once a day, you go buy another Myth Beacon using some Quicksilver, and you use that Myth Beacon to open up a separate reality and go through, and um, you get 16 minutes to raid the Sentinelized system. So there's multiple ways <laughs> that they could introduce entry points either into the Realm of Glass or into the Void should they need to. But I think the Snowflake is more likely a link to the Realm of Glass. And... Um, yeah, anyway, I, talk, I was talking to chap GPT earlier today. I've got two conversations, but this one's quite interesting. I put, in the game of No Man's Sky, there are so many mentions of the realm of glass and the void. Would you say these are the same place or different? Let me just have another swig of my tea. I mean, you can read ahead if you want. Right, so this is what ChatGPT came back with. In No Man's Sky, the Realm of Glass and the Void are two distinct places with different properties. The Realm of Glass is a location that can be found in No Man's Sky's universe. It's described as strange, dreamlike dimension that is shrouded in mystery. The Realm of Glass is home to strange-like structures and ruins that players can explore, as well as unique flora and fauna. It's believed to be connected to the game's lore and origins of the universe. It's also where all the Sentinels come from and all that sort of shenanigans. On the other hand, the Void is another location location in the game that is vastly different from the realm of glass. It's endless, featureless expanse of darkness that players can encounter while travelling through space. The void is a dangerous place as it can cause damage to the player's ships and can be difficult to navigate. So in summary, the realm of glass and the void are two distinct places in No Man's Sky with different properties. They are not the same. <laughs> 
pretty darn freaking epic reply. Now, the void itself, I kind of see the infested planets and all the organic stuff that we're seeing creeping into game as being part of the void reaching out into our universe. It's like the living ships. It's like the infested and nested planets. It's like the giant worms and the worm babies and the emergence sort of expedition. I see all that linked to the void, whereas I see the realm of glass more tied to a sentinels and sentinel space. And um, yeah, I don't know where Ariadne went now, because inside of the Sentinel lore, when you go to the Sentinel sort of structure and pillar, it comes up with Ariadne's code there. However, she disappeared into the void and went aboard a dark freighter. And uh, yeah, she, now we've got a doppelganger standing in her place. And there's all this mention of don't drink the water. And I don't know whether that's a reference from the realm of glass or from the void, or whether that's what sort of crosses between the two, like the river of sticks. It's a bit of a weird one. I don't know where to go with that. I'm pulling on Greek mythology and all sorts to try and make sense of it. I mean, I could ask Ch chat GP T what drinking the water means in No Man's Sky. There we go. In No Man's Sky, there is reference to not drinking the water. Is that linked to the void or the realm of glass? Okay, a few little typos there. Let's, uh, let's fix those for chat GPT. Don't want them to think that humans are not on par with AI. There we go, boom. What do you got for me now, chat GPT? Um, I think I have to hit a send button or something, don't I? I know. I think it's actually thinking. Boom. Oh, here we go. It's typing. Here we go. In No Man's Sky, the warning not to drink the water is not directly linked to either the realm of glass or the void. Throughout the game's universe, players may encounter planets with hazardous or toxic environments, which can include bodies of water that are not safe for consumption. This warning is a general cautionary message to players to beware of the potential dangers on such planets. Additionally, some planets in No Man's Sky have unique environmental hazards that can cause harm to players, including toxins, radiation, extreme temperatures, or other dangers. Okay, um, so yeah, it doesn't think that that's related to either or. However, inside of the law, they, there's kind of cults and things that worship either or, the realm of glass or the void or whatever, or at least come across that way, and they're the ones that usually warn of drinking the water. So I don't know whether it's picked up on all the vast law of No Man's Sky here, and is just going by the basics that it sees on surface. So there you go, I don't really buy too much into that chat GPT answer. However, people inside the viewerverse, I did ask another question earlier on today, and I asked chat GPT GPT, what it thinks the snowflake may mean from um, Shaun of the Murrays, and it gave quite a generic answer at first. I'll put it up on screen, you'll probably see it scrolling over me at the moment. But yeah, and it kind of said that it could be down to weather effects, which takes us back to that initial poll that I did earlier and showed up on screen, that it thinks that it could be to do with maybe hazardous effects and the environments and maybe the dynamic weather, and maybe an improvement to snow sort of biomes and snow welds, or some sort of winter type update or overhaul. But then I said, well, hasn't the fractal got anything to do with procedural generation? And it came back and saying, well, yes, there is that element. It could be linked to Procgen, but then I'm an AI and I, I can't really, you know, speculate all too much on what things might mean. I can only go by what's in front of me, and it's probably more likely to be some sort of winter or frost world biome overhaul. So there we go. You can take that with a pinch of salt or do what you will with it, but that could be what the update is. It could just be an overhaul to frost biomes. However, as you can see inside of the lore and everything that I've laid out to you today in this video about the realm of glass has got me thinking at some point it might not be this update it might not be this snowflake update has got anything to do with it but what I would say is this emoji for me when looking at the list of different emojis is probably the most likely emoji to tie to the realm of glass because you know the snowflake crystalline structures and the realm of glass is supposed to have crystalline sort of structures within it and glass-like structures and relics. So I kind of feel the 
that if they haven't used this emoji, it's a wasted freaking opportunity to, for when they do want to roll out the Realm of Glass, if they ever do. But I was also thinking with Hello Games saying that they had a nice problem. If you haven't seen my video on the nice problem that they mentioned, I'll put a link just above here, a bit up there. Hit that one up, Nice Problem by Sean Murray, where he talks about how the, the universe currently is owned by the player base. And they've put bases on planets, they've built structures and odes to things, and they can't really disturb what the players have done and all the hubs that they've claimed. So if they were to introduce a realm of glass that's a separate reality to the reality we're in, that gives no man, well, that gives Hello Games their little playground, their own little universe to play in. So I kind of would like to hope that they introduce the realm of glass or the void at some point as a little playground for them to play with any sorts of mods and craziness that they want to bring in, but also to give us as the players another place to explore that feels more alien. Yes, because at the moment, most of these planets, they feel a little bit the same after some time. And it'd be nice to have that alien sort of drive and pull to find something new and exciting, to start putting out images and photos again on your Twitter space that feel alien and feel more like this No Man's Sky galactic adventure. Anyway, people inside of the Viewerverse, I think I've given you my sort of sound mind into my own sorts of feelings around Fractal. I might cover off some of the others, but it, it depends how quickly this update drops into the verse, because it could happen any time. Now, something that people are watching, like Hawks, are the Steam depots to see when they update. Now, sometimes the Steam depots, though, they can update maybe a day before the update drops in. Sometimes they put things across to internal and experimental for testing but it's it's rare that they do that on a massive update or an update that contains an expedition with it or sometimes they still put it out there but they lock off the expedition there's a timer on it and it kicks in at a later time so yeah I'm not expecting it to happen. I mean, there are some times where we've had the internal branch and maybe the experimental go live a good week before the public, um, or even two weeks in some cases. But more often than not, when it's quite a tantalizing update where they don't want any leaks, it usually happens the day of the update or the day before the update. So although we're watching this like Hawks, as soon as that changes, that's when I'm going to get super freaking excited. Oh, it would help if I show you the Steam databases right now well it wouldn't it wouldn't here we go this so this is the steam databases that have got on the screen right here people so yeah you can see there experimental and internal two months and three months respectively but yeah I'm watching them like hawks. As soon as they change, I'll be sure to let you know, people inside the viewer verse, or you see Twitter light up like a freaking Christmas tree. So yeah, just keep your eyes peeled. But yeah, I'm excited right now. But when that happens, that's when things really start to kick off and people start going, OK, something's happening. It's happening, people. It's happening. I mean, seeing the emoji is like getting your boarding pass at the station. And then when you see these depots update, that's when this train is freaking pulling into the station. You know what I mean? So anyway, people, I hope that's everything that I've covered off here. I hope I haven't missed anything. But yeah, got my cup of tea to hand. Have a little swig of this. Thank you very much for watching. That's just about warm now. It's freaking red hot at the start. How long have I been going for? 22 minutes. <laughs> okay, people, well, I think that's enough for a tea bake. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.